G'day everyone. I just thought I'd make a quick video to show you how I managed to get my Xbox wireless controller working uh, through Windows uh, running in parallels on my Apple Silicon Mac. Now, I don't know if I'm just like really unfortunate or if this is an issue that's affecting a lot of people, but I can't ever seem to get my Xbox wireless controller to pair with my um, Windows installation whenever I try to put my uh, controller into pairing mode, which is when the um, Xbox light is flashing on and off, meaning it's ready to be paired to a device. Whenever I try to do that and I navigate to the screen, half the time it'll show up and half the time it won't show up. So it's not very consistent. Um, and at the times that it does show up, um, you will click on Xbox wireless controller and it'll try to connect. What I found happens instead is that Mac OS will intercept that pairing request and then the controller will pair with Mac OS and it'll no longer be available to Windows. Even if you are lucky enough that it does pair, and you can see here that in the past I've been able to get it to pair, um, it doesn't actually do anything, it doesn't function. You can't use it to play any games, you can't use it to navigate the OS. So essentially, I can't find a way to pair the Xbox wireless controller via Bluetooth. So that option's gone. Another um, method that I've tried is to connect the controller via a USB cable, because that's what you've been able to do with Intel Base Max in the past. And you've also been able to do it with just regular Windows PCs because Windows has um, drivers for the Xbox controller. So what I've got here now is I've got a, a USB-C to USB-A adapter from Apple. And I've also got a USB-A to micro USB cable to connect the controller. So I'm going to go plug those in now. I get a rumble on the controller. You get this pop-up here. I'll connect it to Windows 11. But as you'll see in a moment, um, what happens instead is it shows up as a generic controller. Um, so it does recognize that something has been plugged in. But this too also does not work. You can't use it to navigate the OS. You can't use it to play any games. Um, you try to load up a game, it doesn't even recognize that there's a controller installed. So I don't know if this is a driver issue with parallels or something weird with Windows 11 um, Pro running on ARM, but you can't use your Xbox controller plugged in either. So here's the method that I found. The way we're going to do this is we're going to use the Steam Link app to forward our controller input to Parallels and to Windows. Steam Link is a free app that you can download um, either on the Mac App Store or on the iOS or iPadOS App Store. And it's normally used for in-home streaming, meaning that you can uh, leave your Mac somewhere, start up a game, and then pick up your iPad, pick up your controller, go somewhere else in the house, you know, lounge around and, and be able to play your games remotely. But what we're going to use it for instead is to uh, forward our Xbox controller input to the Mac or rather to uh, Windows running in parallels. So I'm going to start my screen recording on the iPad so you can see what the app looks like. Now, as I mentioned, you can install this on the Mac, but I would recommend that you install this on a separate device like an iPad or a nearby iPhone. The reason for that is whenever I've tried to do um, the Steam Link app on Mac OS to accept my controller input, it turns on the Mac's fans. Um, so I'd rather offload that additional processing to another device. So as you can see here, I've got the Steam Link app open. I'm going to turn on my Xbox controller. You can see it's now paired. If I go into the uh, Bluetooth settings, you can see there Xbox wireless controller connected. And I can in fact use this to navigate around the UI. So if I go here to the settings, and again, I'm not touching the screen, I'm just using my controller at this point. These are the settings that I've used. If you wanted to be able to use your iPad as a screen for your games, you don't have to touch these settings. But for me, because I'm using it just to control the UI, um, I'm not uh, needing to display the, the screen or any audio or anything like that. So you can see here I've got the video disabled, audio disabled, Microsoft uh, microphone is also off. Input enabled, that's to allow the controller to be able to control the uh, to control Windows and to control your games. 
controller over overlay is um, some additional settings that pop up when you hold a certain button. I'll head back to the main screen. Uh, I can click start playing. It'll say it's connecting to the PC. And then once it connects, that's essentially it. Um, this is now forwarding all of my controller input to the Mac. Now, the first time that you try to do this, a pop-up will uh, come up on your Windows PC and there'll be a pin code displayed on your iPad or your iPhone. You'll need to enter the same code on your laptop or on your Mac in order to be able to uh, allow the Steam Link to pair with your, with your Windows. So like I said, it's all connected up now. It's forwarding all of my controller input and we can use uh, any games or we can test it out. So for instance, I'm gonna go into Steam now and I'm going to open Steam Big Picture Mode and this should accept any controller input that I've had. So I just pressed the A button on my Xbox to cancel the uh, beginning animation and you can see here I'm navigating through it with the D-pad, with the sticks. I'm gonna exit Big Picture Mode and uh, let's try out some games. So the first one I'm going to try here is uh, Skyrim Special Edition. Um, if you want to see how well Skyrim Special Edition runs on um, the M1 Pro MacBook Pro, I've got a separate video on my YouTube channel. Um, you can either go to my most recent videos or you can, uh, I'll probably put a link in the description or something you can check out how well it runs. And in fact, that video was um, recorded using this method to control the game, using my Xbox controller to play the game. So I wasn't using the, the keyboard and mouse or trackpad, I was just using my Xbox controller. You can see here, if I'm going through the main menu, I'm using the D-pad of my Xbox controller. It's working brilliantly. So let's go, let's quickly go into a game and I'll show you how well it works. So you can see here, I'm, I'm here at the inn in Riverwood um, and again, I'm not using my uh, keyboard or my mouse to control this. This is all being done through the Xbox. So you, I can move around with one stick. I can look around with the other. I can crouch, sprint, hit, uh, hit X to bring up my fists. And the best part of this is um, because this uh, game integrates so well with the Xbox controller or rather with the Steam Link app. If I go into my settings and go to controls, it's automatically brought up all of my native Xbox controls. You can see here, left trigger, right trigger, all your face buttons, it all works brilliantly. So it recognizes that this is an Xbox controller and it works really, really well. Um, and this uh, also applies to other Bethesda games that I've tried, including Fallout New Vegas, although that has its own issues uh, at the moment running through parallels. It doesn't really work, but uh, in my limited testing, I've seen that the Xbox controller works really well when it's running through the Steam Link app. Um, and I haven't tested it on the M1 Pro just yet, but I've tried this on an Intel-based Mac in the past, and that is Fallout 4. Fallout 4 also recognized the controls just like Skyrim SE does, and it works brilliantly. So for these kind of games, um, using this app to forward your controller input works really well. Now I'm gonna show you an example of a game that works, but doesn't work as perfectly. And that is Elite Dangerous. All right, so as you can see, we are now loaded into Elite Dangerous Horizons. Um, and again, I'm using my D-pad to go through the main menu. However, this wasn't originally the case. Um, normally, if you have Elite Dangerous, say, running on a PC and you've natively paired your Xbox controller, it'll automatically recognize that and it'll configure all the controls for you. But for some reason, when you try to uh, run the game or run the controller through Steam Link, Elite Dangerous doesn't automatically pick that up, uh, meaning that you can't use your uh, controller to play the game or even do something as simple as navigate through the UI. So what I had to do in the end is I had to set up uh, a set of custom bindings. Um, if I try to show you, for example, flight rotation, um, I had to configure all of these axes of control separately. And if I try to show you a set of controls that requires um, you the use of face buttons, for instance, you can see here, it doesn't say it's ABXY. It says, for example, Joy 2 or Joy 4. 
Um, so it doesn't natively recognize that this is an Xbox controller. Now, the way I had to set up these bindings, uh, it took a while. Basically, I used the free tier of GeForce Now, natively paired my Xbox controller to Mac OS, then launched the game um, through GeForce Now because Elite Dangerous runs on GeForce Now. It recognized the controller and then I uh, copied across all the bindings and then I painstakingly recreated them and there's quite a lot in this game. Um, so essentially you can get it to work. It does take a little bit of effort, but it does work. I assume this is because there's something funny with Elite Dangerous and Steam Link that doesn't recognize the controller properly. So maybe Frontier Development could look into that um, if someone from there happens across this video. So overall, uh, Elite Dangerous does work through this method. However, there were two issues that I noticed. Uh, the first is that because it's no longer recognized natively as an Xbox controller, you no longer get the um, face button overlay. Meaning that um, if you were playing on the console or if you had it natively paired to a, a PC, for example, if you held down, for example, the B button, you would get a list of modifiers that would show, okay, what happens if you press D-pad down, for example, to toggle the landing gear or use the left bumper or the right bumper. Because it's no longer natively recognized, you no longer um, get that overlay. So it might take a bit of relearning or a bit of muscle memory to try to remember what each binding does. The second issue that I encountered was, um, again, using B plus uh, D-pad down to toggle the landing gear. When I press them, the game recognized B first, which by default is toggled to engine boost. So I did boost while I was trying to dock and thankfully I didn't blow up my ship, but um, that is another issue that I encountered. Now, having said that, it could be entirely due to user error. Um, so I might have to do some further testing to see whether that's an issue, but I just thought I'd make you aware. So that is how you can get the Xbox wireless controller working in Windows 11 running through Parallels. And that is by using the Steam Link app to forward your controller input. Now, because it's using the Steam Link app as an e intermediary, I don't think this should be limited to just the Xbox wireless controller. I'm pretty sure that this should also work with the PS4 DualShock and the PS5 DualSense controllers um, because they would also be recognized by Steam Link and they're also supported, uh, I believe they're also supported in, in Windows. Um, and because we're using in particular the Steam Link app on iOS, I'm pretty sure any MFI controllers might also work as well. For example, the uh, SteelSeries Nimbus or perhaps even the Razer Kishi. Um, I'm not sure if uh, Nintendo Switch controllers can pair with iOS devices. Um, so if you have those laying around, you might want to try that out for yourself. Anyway, that's been it for this video. Um, if you found it useful, I'd appreciate a like on this video. Um, I'll be trying to showcase some more games running on the M1 Pro MacBook Pro. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe, that would be fantastic. Um, and if you have any issues or would like to leave any feedback, uh, that's in the comments before. Thanks.